Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Lafave, and today we are on day two of our techniques that you absolutely have to know when beginning to paint with watercolor. Today is going to be some fun ones. We're doing my favorite technique, which is the wet on wet technique, as well as the wet on dry technique. So get out your paints and let's start. But before you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I come out with a new video. Now, let's jump in. Okay, friends, so today we are on day two of our techniques you need to know to begin with watercolor. Last time we did color gradients and we did some blending, which are two really important techniques. And today we're gonna do some a little bit more fun, um, which I already kind of touched on in the first video, but we are gonna start with wet on wet. Wet on wet technique is what drew me to watercolor. I absolutely love this. It is what makes watercolor that shining star of a medium in art, which I love. So we're gonna be having some fun with that. And then we're gonna do some wet on dry, which isn't not as fun, it's just different. So <laughs> I explained a little bit in the last video, wet on wet is when you are painting with wet paint on a wet surface. So a lot of times we'll do this to create a really nice blurry effect or have an easier time with blending or gradients. Um, but it's just a lot of fun and you can create some really beautiful effects by using the wet on wet technique. So I'm going to show you, um, a couple different ways. So you can always start by just wetting your paper with clean water. My, my water's not clean right now, but just like pretend it is by just dragging your brush with some clean water across your page. And this is just fun if you just want to kind of create some really fun patterns and just kind of have a mindful meditative time. So this little area here is wet. Then I'm going to take some wet paint, whatever color you like. And all you're going to do is drop it into that wet area and you get these beautiful explosions of color. Honestly, so much fun. You can create fireworks, patterns, like even stripes, like, hold on, this isn't as pigmented. Hold on. Like, look at how that moves. It is so fun to do. And like I said in our last video, pigment only wants to move where there is water. So you'll start to see the outline of the shape that I made with just water. So another way you could do it, which is a lot of fun, paint a leaf or flowers with just water. Okay, take your color. Let's let's get more color here. Actually, no, Prussian blue. There we go. And then you just drop it into that wet area and watch that color dance. And it only moves where there is water. And it just creates the most beautiful um, patterns and lines. Like it's just it's faded. It's just stunning. It's what drew me to watercolor. You can add in different colors like some yellows, purples, whatever you want. And just watch it do its thing, just tapping it in. Okay? You don't have to fill up the whole area, nothing. And you can just move it around like this and watch it kind of dance and blend together. So, 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 so much fun. So while it's a lot of fun and it can create some really cool um, effects with like botanicals, anything. I love using it in landscapes to create an illusion that things are far away. So let me just wet this up again. Let's pretend this is a blue sky. Okay. So I'm just blending it out. I love to create trees that look like they are far away in the distance using the wet on wet technique. Okay. Now this isn't a typical sky color, but let's just pretend it is. Okay. And what I like to do is put the paint on my brush. With the tip of my brush, I am going to draw a really light line, just using really light pressure coming down like this. And then little kind of branches coming out, just tapping. And it creates 
this really blurry tree. And I, if you've watched some of my landscape tutorials, you would have seen me use this for a lot of backgrounds. Okay, we're just tapping. What you wanna make sure you don't have a lot of is a lot of water on your brush. So if I take a lot of water on my brush and I go in, actually that's not a lot of water, <laughs> a lot of water, it's gonna explode more. Okay, the more water you have on your brush, the less control you have of where that pigment is going. So if I have a ton of water and I'm trying to do this really fine line, it's gonna be really big, okay? So what you want is to have a bit of pigment and a little bit of water. Okay, I'm just gonna blend that out again. Get our pink back here. Now this is all kind of blurry, but that's okay. Okay, so I wash off my brush, I dry it a bit so there's no excess water and I pick up the wet pigment that's right there and then I get these really nice controlled lines. Okay, so you can just kind of practice doing that. So I'm just gonna, I don't wanna waste paper, so I'm just gonna blend this out again and you can practice that. Oops, a lot of blue right there. Okay, so I'm blending it. I got my nice white surface. Look, I have kind of like a color gradient here. In practice, water control and applying small amounts of pigment of wet on wet. So wash off your brush, dry it, dip it in color that's already wet. If your, if your paint is already dry, you're gonna need to add water to that in order to pick it up. So if I just go right into dry paint, you're not gonna be able to get that effect. You have to have pretty decently wet, thick paint-ish, okay? So let's just get the blue because it's the easiest to see. Okay, so here's our blue, it's nice and wet, dark. Okay, and I'm gonna wash off my brush. I'm just gonna dry it on my paper towel so I don't have a lot of water on there. Then I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna try and make these thin little lines. Okay, now if I want it to be a bit thicker, I can just wet my brush a little bit more and see how it's a little bit bigger. So you control the size and like the explosion by how much water and pigment you have on your brush. If I want pretty decent explosion, I'm gonna have a lot of water and pigment on my brush. So that's just something to practice, okay? But it's so much fun and it's so relaxing. When I first started watercolor, I used to fill a whole page with water and then drop in color and then wait for it to dry and write positive quotes over top. It was one of my favorite things to do. It was very um, therapeutic and it felt like nice like meditation kind of thing to do. So have fun and experiment. Again, try different amounts of water. So my brush isn't soaking wet. There's not a lot of drips, but there's a, a little bit of, of water on there. The paint was wet and I can get a decent, you know, little explosion, all right? It's also fun if you're doing, say, like a snowstorm. So hold on for a second. I'm just going to keep using the same one over and over again. Now, remember how I said that water repels pigment? A really fun effect you can get is by having your wet surface, washing your brush off completely, having clean water, pretend my water's clean, and not having it completely dry, your brush, having a little bit of water in there, and then you're just going to flick your brush onto your paper and see how it repels the pigment but it creates these beautiful little sparks of um, just like little blooms, which is really beautiful for like a field that maybe has some like out of focus flowers or some light spots in the background, snow. You can do that with just water or even white. So nice. So the wet uh, water onto the wet background creates some beautiful effects. Okay, so that's, that's basically um, our are wet on wet. I really like it mostly just for creating out of focus things. So like I said, those trees, okay, maybe you have um, a field of flowers. So here's my background. And I want some out of focus flowers in the background. Uh, let's get some green, just pretend. Okay, see how there's just like wet there's like green back here. I'm gonna leave some space here. OK, 
okay? And then for the out of focus flowers in the background, I'm gonna wash off my brush, dry them because I want them to be nice and small. My brush is fairly dry. I'm gonna take some wet pink, just a little bit of wet water there. And I'm just gonna do these little dabs, maybe a little bit more water, always test of pink. And it's gonna look, once it dries, like flowers in the background, like a field of flowers. So I'm trying to make it smaller so they're not so bright or like big and heavy. <clears throat> we can do this for wet on wet and it just makes them look like they're blurry and out of focus. that okay and then we're gonna talk about wet on dry so let me let this dry and then I'll show you what I mean okay now that my paper is completely dry I'm gonna show you the wet on dry technique which is just what it sounds you are painting with wet paint on a dry surface so this is already dry and what that effect does is it makes things look sharp and in focus so we have these little blobs of color that look like they're out of focus flowers now you can take your paint and as we move up close I just left a little bit of white space just so I could put some flowers here you can even do some in front like that these little flowers are gonna look like they're more in focus I know they don't look like flowers <laughs> but pretend it's abstract okay um, you could do like petals going around it's totally up to you it doesn't have to be perfect it never does okay so you have the ones that are blurred out and these ones in the front that are more in focus like so I have better tutorials than this, doing this kind of painting, okay? And then I would take some of the green maybe, and I would do some grass, some wet on dry grass so they're nice and focus. These blades of grass probably use something a bit smaller. You can do little stems from these flowers. And then I'd wait for them to dry before you do centers. Okay, but then you have this depth to your painting when you have that wet on dry out of focus background and then this up close one. And then same with the trees. I should have left those fuzzy trees from the background because um, it's really nice when you have them in the background and then you create your wet on dry trees in the foreground. Okay, so see how sharp that line is? There's no water on the paper, so the pigment stays where you put it. Okay, so if you had those blurry trees in the background and then you have these in the foreground, it just creates so much more depth. So keep that in mind when you're doing any kind of painting. Um, so if you're doing, say, a flower, because you guys, if you know my channel, you know that I love painting flowers again same kind of flower just really really quick if you want to do a center to your flower that's nice and detailed where you can see every line you're going to want to do wet on dry you're going to want this layer to dry because if you don't remember wet pigment if it touches another area that's wet it wants to kind of bleed into it and move around so if I tried to create this like center with dots you're not going to see it it's just going to bleed because it wants to move into that wet area you need to wait for it to dry before you do anything detailed over top now if you want it to look like that where it kind of like bleeds out that totally works too again just figure out what kind of style you want to go for by experimenting with the different styles to see what works the best okay so if you want to do a very detailed center you're going to wait for it to dry first if you want to have leaves that are um, uh, nice and kind of separate from the flower you're going to want to wait for it to dry first if you like a bleed like I'm going to show you what a color bleed is what I like to do with my loose flowers is when you touch one color to the next like that 
and you get a little bit of that color bleeding into the next. Okay, so it doesn't look as detailed, as structured. You have this little bleed from one color to the next. All right, it depends on your style. If you want something more loose, you can do some wet on wet or wet touching wet. And if you want it to be a little bit more structured and detailed, you would do layers and doing some wet on dry. Okay, layers is kind of the key with wet on dry. And that's basically it. So I hope that was insightful. If you have any more questions about these two techniques, um, definitely let me know in the comments below. And I will see you in our next video for more things you just need to know when starting with watercolor technique edition. <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys in our next video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something and make sure to check back for our next video with our last two techniques that you just have to know when painting with watercolor. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.